a 10 hour slow cooker Christmas pudding taste test versus a 10 minute one in the microwave. Ooh. Hello everyone, it's Barry here. Hope you're well. Do you know what a Christmas pudding is? Effectively a fruit filled, alcohol infused, cinnamon spicy steamed pudding. Extremely traditional in the UK. I imagine around the world it is too, but some places might be like, what the heck is that? Recently we did a video called Fast Versus Last where we took 48 hour chocolate chip cookies with burnt butter. Oh my gosh, they were amazing. It was worth waiting 48 hours for these. And when it comes to Christmas pudding, well, you can take a very long time with that. Fast versus last could become a playlist because today we are comparing a 10 hour slow cooker Christmas pudding taste test versus a 10 minute one in the microwave. 10 hours versus 10 minute Christmas pudding and we're actually gonna make it, I'll show you the literal comparison in the same bowl. My wife, Mrs. B, at the end of the video tomorrow will taste test them. She has no idea which one's which to see if it is worth it, if there's any taste difference and if you can get away with an emergency microwave. Christmas pudding. Now we just had a little chat off camera, haven't we? And when it comes to Christmas cooking, particularly like Christmas cakes, you can start to make the cake well in advance by soaking the fruit for a few days, a few weeks, months, or even years, and the alcohol in it can help preserve the fruit. Basically, by soaking the fruit, you infuse these cinnamon spicy flavors, it absorbs some of that fluid, makes it plump, and softens it. So you can really push it as long as you like. And I've already started this recipe, yesterday. In fact, there it is. Yep, right there is my mixed fruit medley for the slow cooker version that I did around about five o'clock yesterday afternoon. So to soak the fruit, what you do is grab yourself a big old mixing bowl. It can be a little bit bigger than the final one that we're gonna use. Add in that dried fruit, which if you didn't know, is a combination of uh, raisins, sultanas, currants, and a little bit of uh, mixed peel, which you can buy separately, but they just tend to sell it in these mixed bags. These are some cherries that I've just chopped up very, very roughly. They're a little bit sticky because they're sugar coated, but uh, get them in. Although it might take a bit of time to get the last little bit in. We're gonna get the zest of an entire orange on there. Pour in some orange juice. It might not look like much at the moment. And of course, if you want a completely non-alcoholic version, it's best to totally make this the day before you wanna eat it because alcohol helps preserve it. You can omit the brandy, which actually goes in now. Which I can confirm. <coughs> To balance that out, we're gonna add in some dark brown sugar. And then we've got two lots of spices. One is a medley of mixed spices, two teaspoons of that, and one teaspoon of cinnamon. The sugar will start to dissolve already, primarily into that orange juice. Keep going, stirring it round until it kind of settles. And you'll be surprised. It's not a huge water level, it's not the ocean, but it's the fruit was in there and it, it smelled pretty good. Cover it in Ratmaster style, cling film style -y. And then, um, well, basically shove it over there. That was my late afternoon yesterday. And that was around about 17 hours ago. So that's already had a 17 hour soak. I'm gonna leave it. There is a slight smell in here from that, despite it being wrapped. So although I'm calling this 10 hour slow cooker versus 10 minute microwave, really the steps started yesterday to really give it that soaking. And you can leave it even longer if you want. So I can't really do many more steps right now, but what I'm gonna tell you is what happens is with the slow cooker, but you're basically gonna put it into a slow cooker water bath. So we're gonna fill it about three quarters with water. I'm telling you this now because when I do it later, after I get back from football, about half past 10 tonight, I'm gonna be doing those steps when my family are in bed so that we get that overnight 10 hour cook. So yeah, we'll fill it with water to the line there, but there are some other ingredients that are gonna go with our soaked fruit. So again, with it being dark later, I'm gonna summarize what they are so that then at half past 10 tonight, I can just shove them in, turn the slow cooker on, and then we'll see you in the morning. Honestly, it smells like Christmas in there. It's so good. It's only when you walk back into a room sometimes after making something like this, that you're like, oh my gosh. But that, actually, the uh, juice in it is thickened up already. It's gone a bit syrupy, but we'll hopefully see a little bit. It's not gonna be pitch black later, but, it's when all this is gonna get added, but I'll show you what I can. Well, one thing I can't show you unless I stick it in lemon juice, I don't really wanna do that, is an apple. I'm just, <laughs> this is an apple. I'm just gonna grate it, okay? So that'll be great. Some plain flour to help thicken it. Now this is some suet. In fact, this is vegetable suet. It's quite popular uh, suet in general, old school stuff uh, in pastry. I think actual proper suet is a rendered fat of some kind, but the vegetarian version is made with oils and rice. I think it's rice flour. So um, I've got to try and stay as traditional as I can, but I fancy doing the veggie one uh, for Phoebe. Cause like I say, as bad as these turn out, 
That's my problem to deal with because these are going to be our genuine Christmas puddings for Christmas. We've got some sherry, which is uh, very festive, which is effectively a fortified wine. There's lots of different versions of that. Uh, two eggs, and uh, I'm just going to whisk these anyway. And they're going to help bond. They're going to help fuse, group hug the Christmas pudding. Zzz. Uh, and we've also got to add in that festive thing of uh, some treacle. Oh my gosh. Quite a sugary thing indeed. It's basically molasses for those of you that go, like, what's treacle? The last thing we've got though to help pad it out again and fill those gaps uh, is some bread slices where I've just removed the crusts. Where's that Christmas smell coming from? Oh, is it the sherry? All of those ingredients uh, for the microwave version are going to be exactly the same measurements uh, and exactly the same. No different. The main difference is in the fruity thing, which I'll show you tomorrow. So other than that, I'm going to basically jump now to about half past ten at night where we bung all of this in together with our dried fruit, shove it in our final bowl. We'll put the bowl. And then I'll go to bed and then we'll do it all again in the morning in the microwave, compare it. I'm really excited, but now I've just got to literally wait and tidy up. So see you later. Hello, it's actually 11 p.m. I did score six goals at football though and we won by two goals. Night, the fruit feels more plump. Good morning everybody, it is day three uh, for me. One thing I forgot to mention, the water that I added to this water bath was warm, okay, to kickstart uh, the slow cooker. I've come in this morning, we can see all the sort of moisture on the top of the lid there trying to escape. And the bowl that we want to make the microwave version is in there, but we'll keep it in there just for the time being. In fact, I could keep that slow cooking away. It's a little bit like a sous vide in a way, what we've done. We could keep it in there for days. <laughs> But I need that bowl for the microwave version. But first of all, we can do the first step where we left the fruit overnight for that one. Well, we've got two choices. We can either omit this step entirely and bung it in the bowl, or we can kind of bodge the overnight process by sticking it in a pan. And that is exactly what we're gonna do. But you'll notice this is actually three times the quantity of the orange juice. Wow, look at that sugar soaking in. We'll give this a little stir off the heat for the moment to turn it into one fairly consistent festive puddle. Look how watery that is. But what's going to happen is we're basically going to bodge that overnight fruit step by simmering this down over heat right now. I'm feeling really Christmassy right now. This is zesty, spicy, fruity, a real nice waft of Christmas coming through that pan, simmering away gently. And hopefully by doing this, it's going to be our bodge version of plumping up that fruit. So about five minutes in total of doing this, and you should have some fluid left. <gasps> Sugar, I nearly knocked that pan then. All oh, that fruit does look plumped. It looks really vibrant as well. You can see, and especially as it cools down more, we've still got a little bit of fluid in there, quite close to what we had the other day after the overnight absorption, but it has gone again more syrupy, which is exactly how we had it the other day. So potentially we've botched that entire overnight step. We're at the stage right now where I need the bowl in there. Uh, this can cool down and I can get my other ingredients ready, which are exactly the same as what I put in that last night. The grated apple, the two beaten eggs, the treacle, the plain flour, the sherry, the breadcrumbs and the suet. Exactly the same amount of quantities. I'm just going to mix this bit now because I found the actually it was quite hard to see how dissolved the flour was and when it's like this, when there's a lot less fruit in it, you can really spot it. I think we were okay in the end, but I thought I'd finish stirring and then every now and then a little pocket of flour, a bit like that, just appeared. And now we pour in our emergency plumped fruit. 
And I think this is gonna be similar to yesterday. That is it, ready for our bowl that's in the slow cooker. Oh, that's warm. Oh. Oh. Oh my gosh, look at that color. Oh, that's amazing. Oh, that's really nice. Oh, wow. Oh. Oh, crikey, I've burnt my nose. <laughs> Oh, I can see the greaseproof paper doing its job. Oh, look, can you, I don't know if it's showing. It's self-loosening. Look, can you see it? <laughs> oh, here we go. Oh, wow. Yes, I want to reuse you again because cutting a circle was annoying for me. Oh, I'm going to give this a quick wash. Ooh, and then we'll go again, but this time in the microwave. I'm going to cover this in foil, keep it in my oven on a very low temperature just so it stays warm for a perfect comparison. It's looking absolutely identical to the one last night. I mean, it should. It scared me how yellow it was last night and it's still looking yellowy now. I guess like you say, it's the fat of the suet and the eggs cooking off, but can it do it in 10 minutes? Some more baking parchment on top. And then just a little plate to act as a sort of lid to hopefully keep it down and keep all the steam inside effective. We were doing a bodge steam. And there it is. All right, less than a minute left. And that thing is angry. There is some serious sizzling going on, but it, against what I thought would happen, it has not risen up at all, stayed in place. And I think it's set. And I think visually there is a difference. Off this comes. Oh wow. It's, it's cooked. But there is a slight colour variation, to be honest. It, I was keeping my eye on it and it was yellower for until about two minutes before the end, then it suddenly darkened. Okay, I think visually side by side they will look different. <laughs> it's not too bad your side actually. I've actually managed to repair it quite well and look. Fast, last, pretty much the same recipe. <laughs> That's quite the difference. All right, I'm not gonna do anything crazy, like light it with brandy. Done that before, it's very fun. But I will give it a light dusting of icing sugar. Nice. So if you've enjoyed this video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up and subscribe if you're not already. And let me know down below if you have any fast versus last idea comparisons that you would like to see, and maybe I'll bring it to life. Look at that. It's like Sandra Bullock in that Netflix thing. Yeah, don't worry, it's still Mrs. B. <laughs> that is our dog, yeah. That is not me. <laughs> okay, are you ready for the first one? I can't see where the spoon is. What? Oh, wow, we went for the whole lot, amazing. Mm hmm yeah. Okay, and here is the other one. Mm. Now is when you say that you don't like Christmas pudding. They both taste very different. Do they? Yeah. That one you've just given me. Yeah. Uh, it's quite sharp. Okay. And I can really taste the um, alcohol. The second one, I got that sharpness and then it was quite um, like soft and like cakey in a way. And then the first one was, you couldn't taste much brandy. It might have just been the mouthful I had. And it was... <laughs> It was like, I felt like I was just eating a mouthful of raisins. Right. <laughs> so that is quite a concise summary, Miss. Which one did you prefer? Oh, I think the first one. Okay, the first one. Yeah. All right, remove your blindfold, Mrs. B. Because you had huh. the, the microwave one first. No. Yeah. Did I really? Yeah. The only thing I'm thinking, if you didn't like the strength of the alcohol, is some of that brandy might have simmered off. Yeah. When I cooked it like that, but you know, I still added sherry in there. That one, that second one. Now you said it was the slow cooked one. Yeah. It was quite um, like soft. Yeah. Was it like, in fact, let me have a Why taste. Why did you try it? So this is the microwave one on the right, okay? It does look like it's been microwaved. It does, doesn't it? Yeah. yeah, see that's really dense and tough and quite rubbery. Mmm. It's nice. It's quite dry. It almost like the breadcrumbs that I put in there 
have become one of the priority ingredients and bonded mm. it together. It is more like a cake. Yeah, I do. Maybe that's why I prefer it. Try that one. You'll see what I mean. Yeah. The flavours are a lot more intense. Mmm. That's a Christmas pudding. That okay. is a Christmas pudding and that is a cake. That's a Christmas cake. Yeah. Maybe that's why. <laughs> <laughs> the flavours in there are deeper, intense. The fruit feels more plumped. Yeah. It's much more like moist as well, rather than that, that's very dry and stodgy and cake and like rubbery. That's too strong for me. Really? Yeah. But honestly, that is like a standard Christmas pudding. Do you not like Christmas pudding? I do. I can't really remember. I only have it once a year. <laughs> I don't, remember I mean, I don't have it in like. July for my birthday. No, I think they're very, very good. I think that <laughs> is probably the, yeah, like you said, more like Christmas pudding. I hate brandy and I can't taste the brandy. I can taste the Christmas puddingness of that brandy essence in there. But honestly, I'm not getting like, oh my gosh. Are you not? No. I did. Oh, okay. <laughs> Maybe you've been secretly drinking it all morning. That's why you can't taste it. I think you could get away with making that one. It's serving. Well, it sounds like it, yeah. This is our Christmas pudding now. We're going to have a 10 minute microwave Christmas pudding. We're going to be picking at it all day. I, I am not going to be picking at that. I like it, but it's, it's quite bland. The intensity of the sugar. There's a lot of sugar in there from the fruit and the sugar we added. Mm. You just don't get it. Like there's apple in there as well and the cherries, there's no like punch to it. Whereas this, like I say, it's like a big bowl of moistness mm. and fruit and flavour and spice and warming and comforting, which is what Christmas is all about. You need a bit of marzipan and rolled ice in it. Oh, but... no. If you had to have one, which one do you like? <laughs> okay, this is amazing. No, this is great. <laughs> I, for me, um, the more like it is worth the wait, develop the flavours. Maybe because it's not got any cream or custard with it. <laughs> okay, mate. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good point. You do like lather that stuff on there. Or ice cream? Mate, you can have what you want with it, honestly. <laughs> well, in conclusion, if you want an emergency, slightly Christmas S cake rubbery version, that's Mrs. B's favourite. Yeah, but I guess this one is the winner for natural Christmas pudding. <sighs> That's all I'm gonna say about that. I personally preferred it, but why don't you guys give it a go? And <laughs> it's completely up to you, but I believe it is definitely worth the wait. So, uh, and actually we made it in a slow cooker. That's awesome. I was gonna say, I'm the really, whole... really impressed that you did it in a slow cooker. Yeah, we normally like make our ham at Christmas in, in that, but I mean, yeah, awesome. Thanks a lot for watching folks. Hope you found this fascinating. I'll see you later. Bye Mrs. B. Bye bye. bye. So conclusion, if you are a Christmas pudding connoisseur, go for the last. If you're more about the texture and you're just gonna dump cream on it and you want an emergency get out of trouble thing, go for the fast. Good luck.